So let me, how many here knows how to do revolve modeling? I would think Anas. <laughs> it's, a, it's a very simple way to do uh, interesting shapes. The one thing you have to uh, take into account is uh, where is my, uh, my center point here. And then what you do is you use curves. I, you, can, you can use um, different types of curves. I personally uh, prefer CV curves. Other people like uh, EP curves or Bichet curves. Bichet is the same thing that you have in Illustrator. Uh, I just like CV curves. Maybe it's just because I'm old and, uh, well. Um, CV curves is, um, works exactly the same way as um, as the polygon shell when you do smoothing. So it's uh, this rule with three points, grades as sharp edge and stuff like that. So I'll hold the X key and I'll put the first one in here. And then I'll just start uh, drawing. And as you can see, there will be no line until I put down the fourth point. There you go. There we get the, the line. So I'll do like a nice wine glass here. So add a few points here so I get a sharp edge or something slightly sharp. And then I'll try to match the points from, uh, from the first part here. Moving down. Mm. Just trying to do something like this and then maybe hold the X key to snap it here and an X wall and there, there, there and then an X key there. So I press enter and I'm done and what I can do now is just like go in choose control vertex and then I can just start moving these points uh, around a little bit until I get what I want so maybe this is more to my liking. And the way you have to think about uh, the revolve is that it is um, it is actually uh, it's, it's like you, you're using like a, a lathe or something like that. So what you do is you have a half of something. So if this is going to be a wine glass, this is uh, sort of like half of a wine glass. So when we have this, we go to our surfaces menu and choose revolve. Uh, we can choose different things in the option box. This is the default. It will revolve around Y, which is fine. Um, it will create cubic uh, NURBS, which is fine. Um, the thing is, um, I can switch this to polygons instead then it'll create polygons. But I'll, I'll stay with NURBS for now. So when I click Revolve, you can see it'll swing it around. It will go black because it was uh, inside out. But uh, never mind that. We can always reverse it. But as you can see, this creates a, a shape that is uh, more or less uh, like, a, uh, like a wine glass. Actually, if I just select the curve here, and go to front view and select all of the control vertices. You can see how I can change this interactively. And I can also do something like this to change it. Um, so I can make it thinner, something like that. Maybe grab these, move those in. So I get something like that. So the, the curves can be uh, edited all the way. Uh, just for surfaces here, I can go and say uh, reverse direction. Yeah. So now you can see how it, it looks. So this is uh, a simple way to build something like a, like a glass. And, and what you can do is you can, you can still keep editing this uh, control vertex. What you should do, though, is make sure you move it in the, in the same plane that it was built originally. Because if you move it off plane, things start to get a little weird. But um, 
mostly just move it in that plane. So I'll just uh, do a little bit of editing here. Now I can see what what I'm doing. So I'll make this a little thicker there. So something like that. Okay. So this is uh, right now. This is the NURB surface, and um, we when we want to work with uh, models and do stuff, we, we prefer polygons. If you want to move this into something like Unreal, you want polygons. So frequently, these days, we want to create polygons. So a way to do this, besides uh, setting it uh, to output put polygons in the first place, is to use Modify Convert, NURBS to Polygons at the top here. And it can convert uh, NURBS to Polygons in a couple of different ways. Um, just reset this. So the default is to use triangles and something called standard fit where it will try to create a nice surface. So if I do that, we get this. And then you can you can tweak that. We have the settings here on the on the right. So we can change the, the settings here. We can say okay this should be maybe a lower value so it gets more detail and uh, this one should maybe be a bigger value and so that way you can you can change how it will uh, interpret uh, this. I think actually this one is the important one. Uh, it's not updating at the moment. There we go. Uh, maybe it's because this one is limited. No? Let's see what I'm doing wrong here. Uh, simple tessellation, advanced tessellation, port bit. Uh, and this is uh, fit tessellation. Okay, so here. We can change values to get this to create a more detailed look. Quartz or triangles, depending on what you want. We like quartz. So this is one way to do it. <clears throat> Another thing you can do is uh, use what's called general, which is a different way of, uh, of interpreting it. So the re standard result is this, which is, of course, very nice. Um, this is because it's made of these uh, in 3D, so if I drag this up, I can change the number of uh, tessellations in, in depending on the size of the object. I can also do this based on the surface parameters, and again, changes to quad or something. Then there is uh, also um, uh, the one called, uh, well, we can do one con called count where it will just try to create the best possible version using a set number of uh, subdivisions. So um, that's this one. So if I change this, it'll try to create something that is nicer. This is a little bit like an automatic uh, level of detail in some games. But the one I frequently use is to set it to control points. What it will do is it will take all of the points of the hull here, the points of the nerve surface, and create a polygon surface based on that. There you go. So that's this. And if I then go and press 3 or smooth it, it will become exactly like this because it's the same sort of math that is underneath. Uh, of course, if you are going to put this into Unreal, it'll look like this. So you want to do something uh, to it before that. Maybe you can use the the smooth button to smooth it so that it gets more subdivisions. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. But if you're just working with it in Maya, then you have a nice uh, simple model here with, uh, let's take a look, uh, hits up display, poly count. So this thing has like uh, 240 faces. And then if we smooth it, it smooths automatically to something like three or four thousand, but we don't have to save that in the file. It just works. So revolve is a, is a nice, uh, effective tool for a lot of things, uh, things like glasses or anything that is supposed to be uh, round, symmetrical. You can also create really crazy stuff if we just grab that curve here and then start to do. It can do like really weird stuff. So you get the idea. 
So let's take a look at some of the other <coughs> modeling options in surfaces. There's loft. The loft uh, tool is uh, it's not used that much anymore, but it's actually uh, quite nice if you create uh, some curves. Let's say I create something going there, and then I create another curve going here, and uh, then maybe I create one in between there, and I can just uh, move these so that they are off center and maybe take the vertices of these make them a little uneven oh, like so and then I can just uh, select these in the order I want it to be uh, lofted and then it'll create a surface across those so that can be used to create a lot of interesting things um, obviously caves um, but also surfaces of cars and other things like that. Yeah, quite nice. Other tools in here. Uh, planner just makes a planner surface with, uh, if I have like a curve. Um, revolve. By rail is a bit like loft, but where you can put a rail on it so that it'll keep a certain shape. Uh, extrude is uh, like extrude in, um, in polygons, but you can do uh, interesting things like just do a circle here you can, ex oops, you can extrude along a curve so if I grab this first and then shift select this and go surfaces extrude options and then turn add path, add component, profile normal then what it does is it creates like a vacuum cleaner hose thingy and if I just turn surfaces off, so I'm only working with the curves. This will be, this can be animated if you like. So you can make like uh, ropes and stuff. So it's also quite nice. Then we have uh, boundary and square is more for uh, <coughs> dedicated uh, NURBS surface uh, modelers. Same go for bevel, etc. So most of the things going this way is actually for, for NURBS modelers. Um, and just to show you what NURBS are all about, you're probably not going to use them that much, but I'm going to show you anyway. So I'm going to create a NURBS circle here, and go to top view, and then go to control vertex, and I'm going to create a shape that is uh, a little bit like, uh, like this. Maybe uh, I just make it slightly bigger, like so. And grab this, duplicate that, move this up, like so. Maybe make that slightly smaller. And then I'll loft between these. There, so that creates a surface. Uh, let's see. There we go. Um, I want it to be the right way. Uh, and then I can create another surface. Uh, I can just use a NURBS primitive plane. So I create a plane and make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Move it up a little bit. Maybe uh, add a few subdivisions here. Like so. There. And then maybe go and grab the control vertices of this. Change the surface slightly. Like so. And then maybe uh, grab the center. Yeah, move that up a little bit so that it has a slight curve. So what I can do now is intersect these two surfaces. So I just go intersect there. So, as you can see, that creates a curve on the surface. And the next thing I can do is something called trimming. So I just go surface, trim. And click on the part I want to keep, press enter. So you can see it removes everything else. Do the same thing here, surface, trim. Click on this, press enter. <coughs> and there we go, I have like a, something that could be uh, the shape of a mouse. And actually everything is still uh, fully uh, interactive, it can 
it, it uses history, so you can see it breaks when I move it too far. Then uh, let's uh, go in and take the round tool. So I just go surface, round tool. That is there. Just uh, click and drag here. So I select that and then I can set the um, the radius here in press enter. And then it rounds that. Okay, I can see that surface sort of uh, turned inside out. Uh, but I can just go and say reverse direction. I was supposed to be able to go and say reverse direction. Uh, surface, reverse direction. No, doesn't want to do that. Oh, anyway. If I just pop over here, you won't be able to s pop over here. You can see how it works. So this is actually uh, the modeling method that is used for uh, something like cars and stuff like that. Uh, you can also do things like uh, create a NURBS uh, cylinder here. Move that up. What's that? That was a polygon cylinder on the NURBS cylinder. And there. Move that up. And then I can create um, what's called a surface fillet between those two. So you can see now it creates a, a fillet between these surfaces. Even if I do things like uh, rotate them, maybe change the size of this, make it slightly longer. So it creates a nice uh, shape there that makes one uh, flow into the other. So this is, uh, this is tools that are, are primarily used for something like uh, designers uh, of both cars and, um, and products. But it can be used to create um, nice geometry that you can then use later on. You can convert all of this to polygons obviously and then you can stitch it together and create one surface. So um, that is uh, the basics of, uh, of NURBS. Another tool that we don't use too often is booleans. And there's a reason for that, that you'll see in a second. So if I have one cube and I press three, it will become something like a sphere. Uh, but if I have two cubes, what if I wanted to merge those together, like here? I can make these two into one by using uh, mesh booleans union so now th this is one boolean object but if I smooth this it will look a little weird it actually went pretty good but it, it gets kind of weird and especially if I do this a lot of times so if I add a cylinder here move that up maybe make that slightly bigger make it go through the whole thing like so so, and then I grab those, and then I go Boolean Union. And if I then press 3, you can see things start to look really ugly. And the reason for, for that is that when Boolean is working, it's not taking care of uh, making sure that we are getting uh, quartz. So what we have here is like, uh, this one is like a multi-sided polygon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's a lot of polygons in there. So to make this work, you would have to have to go in there after you did this and sort of clean this up. You can do that. Uh, you can do things like uh, doing, um, uh, not that one, uh, uh, this one. So you can do like a small um, uh, extrude here. So that will help. You can see that keeps the shape a little better. This is still a multi-sided polygon. You'd have to fix that, especially this weird place over here. You'd have to go in and grab your polygons and then move them around. And then you'd have to do something to this uh, big polygon here that is multi-sided. We could just go in and say triangulate, uh, if I can find it. It's <coughs> there. So again, you can see that will sort of uh, make things work a little better, but absolutely not perfect at all. If we switch here, you can see we'll get 
weird stuff here. This will sort of look okay, but we'll have to deal with all of the other problems. So most of the time, if you use Booleans, you will work um, on hard surface modeling that will be the, the detail level that you model, you are not going to use smoothing to make it look nicer. So you would go in and uh, make sure that all of these edges were um, broken up and so that you could, uh, so it looked nice like the cube I showed you earlier. And, and as you can see, this will uh, start to be tricky because there's a lot of uh, funny edges in here. But you could go in and just start selecting edges like maybe so and then just get started here like grabbing these there, there, there something like this I guess and then you could try doing a bevel so just go and say bevel and you can see that will sort of work most of the of the time it will create a nice little bevel there but again if you if you try to smooth this ever all hell will break loose but uh, bullines are good at uh, at cutting things into each other so if i uh, just oh actually what i can do is i can go to the boolean uh, just get rid of this the bevel one and then I'll go to the boolean that was that one I'll get rid of as well yeah so you can see I'm just moving backwards here I want to get rid of that one as well and I want to get rid of this one okay okay so I have what I had after the boolean the actual boolean I can change so I can make difference instead or intersection so I can change how it uh, is doing uh, the boolean and if I add something like a sphere let's move that up make that bigger oh, like so and then I choose this and then shift select this and I, and I can go and say booleans uh, difference it will cut the sphere out of the of the rest and I still have the sphere, sphere here in my outliner so it's virtually still there I can go in and change it yeah. and these things can can be animated so it's doing this uh, on the fly to sort of uh, create this uh, effect of, um, of cutting things out. So if I make this too big, it'll cut out the whole thing. And if I make it very small, it'll just cut out this little... Well, you can do uh, Swiss cheese if you like. Stuff like that. So I think um, do a little experiment, uh, experimentation with, uh, with the Revolve. Uh, maybe, if you like, you can try out the, the NURBS uh, and definitely try out the, the Booleans for polygons um, to see what, what goes on. I'll just show you quickly. I can show you with using the smooth here what happens when we smooth it. This is why it goes bad because the smoothing works on each polygon and, and the, the big problem is if we have polygons of, of, of very different sizes. So I have small detailed polygons here that won't change that much when I smooth it. They will stay more or less the same. But the big polygons will get affected quite a bit because they will be, it will try to turn this into a sphere more or less. So um, give it a try.